Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So have you ever found yourself trying to do an all keys loss or adding a key when this key task becomes an impossible situation, all right? What if I told you the culprit just might be hiding in a module that you never suspected, okay? Well, in today's case study, we're gonna be unraveling this exact issue and I wanna show you how I came and helped the client solve this particular problem, all right? So with that being said, I'm gonna show you coding a used comfort control module on a 2013 Volkswagen CC with the Autel IM608. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent Autel diagnostic consultant. I align people with the right diagnostic tool strategy and give them the one-on-one -on -one training and support that you see in this presentation. So if that's you, you can scan this QR code or head on over to my website. Now. What you're going to be learning today is the following. The tools used in this case study, when the comfort system central control module will prevent key registrations and the important terms and definitions related to the system and the step-by-step -step process of module replacement and coding. The tools used in this case study are the following. The IM608 and the use comfort system central control module. Okay. Now, a bit of background. So the Client tried to do a simple key registration, wanted to add a key, and it was failing. And after thorough diagnosis, we determined that the comfort system central control module was the issue. When he purchased the donor module, he needed help configuring the used one as he's never done this procedure before, okay? So what is this system, okay? So this is also known as the comfort uh, control module, the CCM, or the central convenience module, all right? And it's a component in the vehicle that's responsible for controlling various comfort and convenience features. Now, the specific functions may vary depending on the year, make, and model of the vehicle, but typically you'll find the most common uh, things that it controls are like the electronics in the vehicle, the windows and sunroof, the door locks, the interior lights, the heating, and in rare cases, even the transmission, okay? So what I typically do, I don't like to assume if used modules can be put on the vehicle. Um, I validated this, this with my engineer, and once I got the go, then that's what we did. So the first thing I did was to confirm the problem by doing an initial diagnosis, okay? So keep in mind, the original module is still in the vehicle. Okay, and uh, this is just a random <laughs> fact. What, what I've been scanning a lot of these uh, Volkswagens lately, and you know, one time I'm asking myself, why are they always have these numbers around these control units? So, not, not that it's important, but all these numbers represent is they're just identifiers of the control module. So, like, no matter you know what Volkswagen or Audi you're working on you're gonna have these numbers correlate into that particular module. So in our case, we're gonna be looking for number 46, okay? So let me speed this up. And then if you look right here, that's our comfort system control module, okay? Now, the fault code, when we go to trouble codes, you're gonna see it's gonna come up with a 01179 so this code signals that there's an issue with the key registration, obviously. And think of it as like a key blocker. This is what's actually blocking us from registering the key. Now, the diagnostic workflow that I did was I took the, sy the symptoms, I put it in the repair information, and followed the guided test procedures. And this is how we came to the conclusion that this module was indeed the issue, okay? so. Next, what we need to do is select coding to obtain the original value. So we're going to go to coding, okay? And once we click coding, we're going to get a prompt that's going to tell us to write down the original values, okay? So current values represent the existing software coding on the control unit. New value is where we're going to input the new software after making the changes. The WSC is the workshop code, and this is just a unique identifier for the workshop where the coding or services is being done, okay? 
And then the IMP is like the import code. So this code could also be like a unique identifier for the part or software being used. Just another layer of tracking. And then lastly is the uh, component. So the component is the specific part or system within the vehicle that you're working on. Okay. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take a picture of this because we're going to need it um, when we install the uh, donor module. Okay, so our next step is the removal procedure. <clears throat> now you're gonna find this module in the passenger glove department, okay? And then what you need to do beforehand is make sure that all the electrical systems are turned off and the ignition is also off. And then once you have installed everything back into the vehicle, keep in mind there are other uh, special functions that are linked to this module that need to be adapted, okay? So the reason why I know this is because when I looked at the repair information, it clearly says tire pressure monitoring and central locking systems must be adapted depending on the vehicle equipment. In this case, start by adapting the anti-theft immobilizer and then proceed to the other ones, okay? So in plain English, guys, when you do this configuration procedure, the car is not gonna start. So you need to, if you don't have the IM608 or the Otis software, you need to at least have some type of strategy to, uh, do this adaptation for the keys, okay? Now, we're going to step number four is coding and final checks for the replace module. Now, what I'm gonna do is the donor module's in and to prove it to you, we're gonna go to trouble codes and we're gonna see all the new fault codes, okay? So from here, we're gonna go to coding and then I'm gonna uh, click okay. And if you look here, Okay, the reason why I'm not going to set this value here because I compared this to the original and they're the exact same value. Okay, so this is quite long. I want to eliminate the risk of, you know, screwing something else up. But what we're going to do from here is we're going to select the uh, WSC with our finger and then we're going to go to set value. Okay, and when we do that, we're going to have a, uh, a window where we're going to input the original workshop code value. So we delete those and we're going to go ahead and uh, type those recorded ones. And then we're going to click enter and then we're going to click OK. And we're going to repeat this, repeat this process all the way through. All right, next is import code. We're going to delete those and go ahead and put that in. And we're gonna click OK, and we're gonna do the same thing with the component. All right. We're gonna delete all of those, and we're gonna put the new value in there, and we're gonna click Enter. All right, click OK. Click OK one more time. And now we're gonna get a confirmation that all the uh, control unit information has been recorded. And if you look at the ECU information, it's gonna have everything that has been stored on this uh, module, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to trouble codes and I'm gonna see if this cleared the code and fixed our problem. All right, we're gonna click yes. And then we are done, all right? That's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> best feeling in the world, all right? So that's pretty much it guys. So things to remember, make sure the CCM module has no faults prior to doing key registration. So like if it's a hard fault, all right, um, it can't be there when you're doing the registration, otherwise it's not gonna work, okay? If it's, if it's a hard fault, follow the diagnostic procedures to determine if it needs to be replaced. Next, make sure the part numbers are the same when you're exchanging the control units. There's been a lot of times where clients will get a, a very a variation of a year, like when maybe it's newer, maybe it's older, and it's always like problematic, okay? So make sure it's exactly the same. After the CCM module has been configured, do the additional sequence of adaptations, okay? Um, you're always gonna have to keep this in mind. When you're doing any type of module replacement, it either needs some layer of coding or adaptation. So just look at the service information. And lastly, frameworks and preparation pre prevents poor performance. Many techs shy away from Volkswagen and Audi, 
because it's of its complexity, which is understandable. But that fear often comes from not having a solid framework. Okay, and a structured approach like the one that you saw in today's you know, presentation will eliminate that fear and prevent any costly mistakes. Okay, so if you want this systematic approach and like to tackle these issues, book the diagnostic tool consultation. I can get you the right tool, get you the right tool strategy to solve problems like this. Okay, so with that, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Comment, like, subscribe, and with that, I'll see you in the next one.